Once you've killed the Ender Dragon, you're left with a bunch of obelisks, in the end, doing absolutely nothing. Today's video is about transforming that into a city that can be used to live in. However, this is a project like none other. Only really dedicated hardcore survival players will be even able to attempt this. It will take hundreds of hours, unless you want to do it in creative of course, which is what we did. So today I want to show you how to make this, the obelisk city in the end. But because we're in the end, visibility is kind of low, so let's go to a normal world, but copy and paste in those obelisks. So once we've killed the end dragon, this is what we've got left over. This is what we're going to transform into our city. And we need to start off by selecting the largest of the obelisks. All of them are at different heights, so we're going to have three different types of tower. The largest and thickest obelisk is where we're going to have our main attraction, the mage type towers. There is a block of bedrock at the top which you won't be able to remove unless you're in creative. The first thing I did was get a ladder all the way to the top and build up some end stone which is not in short supply all the way around the base to integrate it into the terrain to make these feel a little bit more at home rather than just pasted into the land. For the entrance we're going to have a birch and blue stained clay palette and this is going to set the style for the rest of the build. While these aren't too hard to make they have to be well thought out. On the side of the pillar we're going to set different balconies and make them also out of those same blocks but we have to make sure that they're placed at good positions making sure that they balance each other out it's very difficult to explain but you can see that they are all at different places even if they don't have an exact equal distance between them so for the platform we're going to make exactly the same one at every single part that we've highlighted it's actually really simple there's a slab balcony with some fences and the same arch over the top with some fences underneath. The design is very simple but it's the placement of these which is going to make the obelisk look good. If that was too fast for you don't worry we've got another three or four to make. We're going to have a nice spiral staircase only partially round the obelisk. We're going to link up this one and the platform behind the obelisk together. And even though we're not going to be using these walkways because we have the ladder that goes all the way up the obelisk, they look really good and it's part of the style. So I do recommend that if you undertake a task like this, that you go ahead and make some of them. I don't expect people to hollow out the obelisks, just one big line with a ladder will do because all of the living space is at the top. If you're really hardcore and you've got a good enchanted pick, go for it by all means. But it's going to take a really long time if you're going to do that. But you will need some obsidian. So you've got a good supply of it if you decide to do that. We're going to need some obsidian for the top. So we're just making sure that all the platforms are the same and we're linking up two of these platforms to have the walkways even though they are just cosmetic. We actually decided not to add the fifth platform that we marked out originally. Don't be scared to make changes if things start to look a bit odd. We decided instead to add some windows to add a little bit more of a brighter purple to it and fill in some of the spaces that would have been completely blank before. So we added windows all the way around and that's pretty much the outside of the obelisk done but we need to work on the tower above it because it obviously looks a bit strange right now just these pillars with balconies on them. The tower itself is where all of the magic happens so to speak. This is where people will live if you decide to live in a town like this. So what we decided to have is some supports to make sure that the wide platform doesn't look like it's just free floating and give them a very good arch and we have a total of eight. A cross section and a diagonal section. Honestly, there's a lot of flexibility in this design, so if you want to do things differently, go right ahead. In fact, I encourage you to do things differently to the way I've done it, because I love to see some innovation. So once we've got those supports, we then make a circle that goes all the way around and start filling in the platform. Of course, we make some edits as we go along, but this is the baseline. Underneath, the platform is incredibly flat, so we want to give it some shape, and we do this by simply adding 
another layer of slab, but slightly in from the original. To increase the transition, we also put some birch blocks and some birch fence to just make the building flow upwards a little nicer. We've got a really nice shape with all of those supports and integrations. Using sandstone staircase and the slabs, we've got a really great technique for making a balustrade around that circle. And using the obsidian that we mined on the way up, you may need some more of that than just that one column, we're going to make a Stonehenge-like structure around our obelisk, and this is going to be the base of our living space. We've also got some arches between them to try and make it look a little thicker. And around the outside at the top, we're going to have a lip that's going to encompass our coned roof when we start making it. So it should look a little something like this. We've got a really wavy texture to it and the shape complements the rest of the build, especially with those curved arches. The roof is going to be a little more difficult, especially as you're going to need a lot of stained clay. We're going to be using primarily blue, but we will also mix in some of the lighter blue as well later on. You want to try and make a really, really tall cone shape. It might look absurdly tall from close up, but from the bottom or from another tower, it will look just right. So you want to have something that looks a little bit like that. And I'm going to show you a technique so that if you struggle with these kind of roofs, you will find this perhaps a little bit easier. So when we go one block further into the center and also raised up, you can see that we're leveling them out so that they're all the same height. This is just a lot easier than trying to give it shape immediately. What we're doing is getting the height correct and then editing the shape afterwards. So if we take a step back, you can see that this doesn't exactly look right. It's not even a perfect cone shape yet. So what we need to do is on the flat surfaces at the front and the sides and the back, raise up the middle and have it slope downwards towards the corners of our roof. You can see that it's all starting to take a little bit more shape. We do that at every single layer. We lower the bits in the corners, but at the flat surfaces, raise it up. And this gives it the V shape that it's going to need at each corner. If you replicate that round on all of the four sides, you should get a very perfect looking cone shape. This does take quite a substantial amount of practice to get right, and you will need to make little edits here and there. But if we zoom out, you can see the effect that it's had. The shape is much nicer and much more natural looking. The cone shape is then completed by adding a lighter blue just to mix in the purple and give it a texture that I normally have to complete the full palette. If we take a zoom out, we're going to add an interior bit of a spiral staircase because the living space can actually be inside of that cone roof. Regardless of that, we've actually got a finished product. So you can see all of the other obelisks are completely empty and we've got our one tower. But what we need to do now is do exactly the same thing, perhaps leaving the balconies in different places and replicate that on all of the largest obsidian towers. So we had three of those and we've ended up with three towers with slight variations in them. We didn't replicate them over and over again in the video to save a lot of time. This is probably the most time consuming project that I've displayed on the channel to date. We are now left with two different sized obelisks, the smaller one and a medium sized one. So what are we going to do with the smaller ones? We decided that we would have a spiral staircase that went round the outside of this one because it was a lot more manageable on the smaller size. We used half slab to make our way all the way round, making sure of course that we couldn't get stuck on our way up. We made sure it went all the way round to the top, however we took away some of that later because we needed some space for the platform. The idea behind this one is to have farming platforms. Because Endermen will spawn throughout the end unless you light everything up, or place carpet down or all of those other tricks, we decided to have everything just raised up so that you can watch the Endermen in their natural habitat and farm away at your leisure. So we've got a similar style of platform as to the towers, but this one is just more of a bowl shape that holds in all of the grass for farming. So as you can see, the spiral staircase stops a little bit before the bowl and we've got a barrier that goes all the way around the edge only for this one we've used fence gates and fences 
Once we've done any little details that we wanted, we added a few supports just to match the theming and the style that we've got going on. It actually worked having the bowl just sitting on top of the obelisk, but the supports really just went with the whole thing that we've got going on here. We also added some fences in between the spiral staircase to make it seem a lot less floaty. The top of the spiral staircase ends a little bit below the farmland so that there's no conflict between the two builds. So then we've gone ahead and hoed all of the land and planted our crops, which will eventually grow into carrots. You can use it for whatever you would like, whether you want a tree farm, crop farm, or even just a park space, whatever you want. We also added some windows on this obelisk to match the one of the tower. And like the other tower, we need to replicate this on all of the other smaller obelisks. I'm pretty happy with how this came out, and it's not the most detailed thing in the world, but the focus of the build is supposed to be on the larger pillars, not on this one. This is just designed to be a, a more functional thing so that you can actually survive in this city. However, we do need to go ahead and replicate that on all of the other smaller pillars. I'm fairly sure that the heights are randomly generated, so you could end up with only a few. We ended up with four, and this went quite well with the amount of towers. You should really have more farms than towers. So if you have something different, you might want to edit what you use for each obelisk. So we're now left with three medium sized towers, and we weren't quite sure what to do with these. So we decided to go halfway between a farm and a usable tower. We started off by adding another entrance similar to the original, just with a slightly different design, but using exactly the same block palette. The idea behind this obelisk is to go somewhere between the farmland and the towers, they're just going to be a community space. So on our way up, we're literally just going to decorate the outside, and it's going to look a lot simpler than everything else that we've done so far, so that it doesn't look too busy overall. We've just got this sort of wraparound bracelet that's going to go around the obsidian at intervals. So I'm only going to do two of these because the medium sized obelisks are actually not that tall. So they've got six blocks between them. And like I said, I wanted to keep this design particularly simple. I actually really like the effect that it's had, just the color of the glass in the center along with the birch. It just really works well. The bottom did have a little bit missing, but instead of putting another bracelet around the bottom, we decided just to have a simple birch pattern wave up and down around the bottom of it. And that's pretty much the base layer around this particular obelisk, but we need to do the top of it. And we're going to do exactly the same thing we've done for the others. We're going to make some supports with a large circular birch platform with a balustrade around the edge. Now I've pointed out some issues surrounding actually building this in survival, but one occurred to me that would probably devastate a lot of people if it actually happened. If you were going to go and do this in survival, not only would it take hundreds and hundreds of hours, but if someone was to resurrect the dragon with the egg, it would destroy everything. So, just leave the egg alone, okay? Anyway, we've got some extra details on this platform. I didn't sort of talk through what we were doing too much because it was very, very similar to everything we've done before. And you probably could manage that without too much instruction. You can see that I've got some extra crenellations around as an extra detail. And that's pretty much the design for that platform. We of course need to go and replicate that on the other two platforms that are of the same size. Now, it is time consuming, however, once you've done it, the effect is quite marvellous. It looks absolutely unique. I've never done a project quite like it. It's almost a transformation, but also a community project, much like the jungle and ravine towns. We added some bridges between each of the spires to give a sense that this is actually a town and you can move between them. So we gave a function to those walkways that make their way round each tower. Now you don't actually have to use them, you could just leave the farms there as decoration or use them as forest or whatever, but if you actually wanted some function in this town, you could easily connect up each of these pillars. We did think about having some bridges go across the middle, but that kind of defeated the point of having it in a large circle. 
and have your view unobstructed. We then added some pathways in between the entrances of the main towers and they all meet in the middle where the dragon egg is and the portal back to the real world. So we just decorated it to make it look a little bit more fancy seeing as this is our portal back. Just make sure you don't touch the dragon egg. So, a big thank you to the people that did this time lapse with me. Pearlescent Moon, Adjust Me, and Botbox all helped make this project come to life. Now, while we didn't show all of them being recreated, the idea is very simple behind this town. Three designs used on different sized obelisks linked up to form a really cool looking town. Now this is, like I said, nothing like I've ever made before. However, this is only in a normal world with a sky biome. This is not what it looks like in the end. In the end, everything is really, really dark and it's got that odd sky about it. So if we go and have a look what it looks like in the end, not only will you see that your render distance creates a shadow of what's there instead of actually being able to see any colour, but when we get a little bit closer, you'll see how this build really fits inside this dimension or whatever you want to call it. The spires and the shape are visible even as shadows, but the render distance really affects this for me. I absolutely think this is unique to a T for this world. Now, if anyone manages to make this, please tweet this at me. Even if you did it in creative, it's just such an impressive project to undertake. If you like the style, but perhaps don't want to do it in the end, by all means, take this and make it work for you somewhere else. Anyway, that's it from me, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. We turned a bunch of normal looking obelisks into a really cool looking town. Thank you very much for watching, and if you have any cool suggestions for things like this, let me know in the comments below. Goodbye!